my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're either going to do the most fun video that I've ever done or the biggest fail video I've ever done. As you can see by the title, we are going to let predictive text choose the way this video goes because I can relate anything back to a story time and back to prison wife life. So let's put my money where my mouth is and see if we could do it. If you're interested, please keep watching. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I'm the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Lives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. We don't glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here, but I will teach you how to make the best of this really painful, hopefully one-shot deal. Just a really quick FYI before we get started. My air conditioning is broken. We had a tech come out to the house yesterday to take a look at it. We thought they were gonna fix it. We can't. It's completely broken. It has to be replaced. So it's a matter of a $20,000 job to replace upstairs and downstairs, or we wait three weeks for some sort of homeowner's insurance to kick in, and then it's $75. So uh, it's a no-brainer. But in the meantime, it's hot. It is miserable. So I don't know how many videos I'm gonna post over the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna try my best to film, but I might have to skip a few days. To keep it tolerable, I'm sitting in front of fans all day, but when I film with the fans on in the background, you hear the wind and the wind cover on my mic covers the lens. It's ratchet up in here, but the whole point is it's miserable when I try to film. My makeup feels sticky. I sit with a beauty blender and in between talking, I have to wipe the beads of sweat off of my face. So I might need a little break, but I'll keep you guys posted. I'll do my best. Maybe I'll do more lives. I'm not sure. But that's also why my hair is slicked back. I look like a little boy. I was trying to do something different. I was trying to do a curly pineapple. I'll put a picture of it here. It looked like I had stuck my finger in the electric socket, but three weeks. I could do this three weeks. Forget that. For now, let's let predictive text guide us on where we're going to go. So let's start with the words prison wife. Story, time, video, that's what we're doing, while I do a taste test and I am happy to help people survive by avoiding the pain I, oops, I hit the number five, I live in the comments below are the ones that I have to be just one of them. Prison Life Storytime video while I do a taste test. Let's start with that. When I first started creating YouTube videos, it's kind of like I do now, but I talk more about prison wife stuff now. Back then, I was doing everything. I was doing makeup, I was doing food, fitness, everything, just kind of surrounding my journey as a prison wife. So I go to the hotel room, I was eating meat at the time, and I cooked ground turkey, and I made it into chili, and I brought it in the hotel room, and I made this whole video about the ground turkey chili. And one of my friends saw that video, and she was laughing hysterical, because she's like, really? What? Let's just do prison. Prison wives get married in the first place. Oh, oh, here's a good story about prison weddings and prison marriages. Where Adam lives, they do weddings once a year. Adam's in the medium level security prison and across the way, he's in a federal complex. So you have different levels of security in different buildings. So in state systems, usually they're on different floors of the same building, but these are all different buildings. So it's one building of medium and then across the parking lot is the camp. Usually white collar offenders go to camps. There's no fences surrounding the camp, stuff like that. Violent offenders, sex offenders, they can't go to a camp because their security level is too high. Their points are too high. Do you guys remember that Wesley Snipes went to prison for, I think two years, a year and a half, two years for tax evasion. Well, he was housed at the camp at McKean across from where Adam is. Part of his job was to walk over to the FCI because that's common. A lot of the people that are at the camps will walk over to the FCI as their job and do things like clean or help give out food when there was a lockdown, things like that. So Wesley Snipes used to come over and he would clean. And he became friendly with the cops. I heard he was a really, really nice guy. I never saw him when I was there. This is Future Ro editing this video. I should probably add that they, I am sure, purposely didn't schedule him to clean at the FCI during visit days because I'm sure they wanted to avoid any type of fangirling or harassment or anything like that from visitors. 
every once in a while when we're at visit, you'll see guys from the camp come over and they'll be mopping the floor and cleaning the bathroom. They probably want to come see the girls that are waiting for a visit, to be honest. We're all dressed up in our heels and our tight clothes and all that stuff. This one afternoon in March, it's wedding day, and all of the brides go into this little room that's closed off, it's glass enclosed, to get themselves ready. They all help each other get ready, and it's cute, it's sweet. I've heard, I've never done it, I've never been there. But it's the brides and it's their witnesses that are in there. I think you're allowed one witness. Brides are getting ready. Wesley Snipes comes in to clean. And one of the brides opens the door, peeks her head out, and goes, Yo! It's Eddie Murphy! The cop that was working that day kind of built up a good relationship with him. They had a fun banter going back and forth. And she ragged on him forever, calling him Eddie Murphy like, you are such a has-been. Nobody knows that you're not Eddie Murphy, that you're Wesley Snipes, this and that. And the bride's friends were like, shut up, shut up, that's not, shut up, shut up, get back in here. You look stupid. Which also brings me to another story told you this is going to be a good video I guess. I was shopping at the Short Hills Mall back in the early 2000s. Did you guys watch my early 2000s video where I recreated an early 2000s makeup look and I told you all of the trends that were popular the year that Adam was arrested in 2001 hysterical. I'll put it in the cards up there. But anyway so it's back then I was at the Short Hills Mall which is this really posh ritzy mall in New Jersey and I was with my sister. And we're walking out of Macy's into the mall and a lot of celebrities would shop there, especially celebrities who are from New Jersey. So we're walking out of Macy's into the mall and all of a sudden my sister's like, Ro, Ro, she starts hitting me. Look, it's Faith Hill, it's Faith Hill. And I'm nudging her, shut up. No, it's not, no, it's not, no, it's not. It's Faith Hill from the Fijis. It was Lauren Hill. Obviously, it's a genetic quality. Okay, so let's do more predictive text. Let's do, let's just do jail. Jail for a while. Oh, I can tell you a story about that. One of my friends fell madly head over heels in love with this guy. And they dated a little bit, but it didn't work out because he knew he wasn't good for her. He knew he wasn't at a good point in his life. At that point, we didn't know it was because he was doing illegal things. We just thought that he had a complex. So he breaks up with her, but it wasn't on bad terms. It was more just because he needed to go do his thing and he didn't want to break her heart and he knew she was a good girl. Four or five years pass and she doesn't hear from him and he pops into her head and so she starts searching for him and she couldn't find him. Nobody had posted on his Facebook for a couple years and she started to get the idea to call county jails, to call prisons and she found him in county jail and she wrote to him and he wrote back and they started this exchange back and forth and it piqued her curiosity again. So she asked me to go visit him with her one time in county, which of course I did. We were best friends. We were like sisters. We did everything together. So she comes to pick me up from work one day and she drives me up to Newark. He was in Essex County and we went through the process got through the metal detector. I told the story all about this in my jail versus prison video. This visit was jail. So it was in a little room. It was behind glass. He was on one side, she was on the other side and they had this little phone. Actually, it wasn't a phone. I always say a phone, but it was a vent with holes in it that they had to speak into. I just remember sitting back and watching the two of them. And here's a side note, me and this guy couldn't stand each other. We never got along. He didn't like me because I saw through him. I didn't like him because I didn't like the way that he treated my friend when they first dated. But I just sat back and I watched the two of them and it was the sweetest thing, the love that I saw between them when they saw each other even behind glass. Now this was way back before I got back in touch with Adam. It was just beautiful. And at the end they did that hand down the glass thing and blowing each other kisses. And I didn't genuinely understand it because I again wasn't back in touch with Adam yet. but. I just thought it was so beautiful. Even though I couldn't stand the guy, I loved my friend so much. To see her so in love, to see so much love on two people's faces was just, oh, made my heart melt. Let's do prison relationship. Prison relationship with the world famous. Ooh, prison chips. Oh, I already told you guys about shebangs. Prison relationship with the man who is, I just whistled, who <laughs> is in the feds. Hey, I know somebody in the feds for 20 years. Let's do 
prison wives get a bad rap. That's for sure. Prison wives get a bad rap. I mean, I got stories for days. Here's a good one. We were at the Prisoner Family Conference last year in Dallas. We use it as our meetup as well. So a whole bunch of us will go down there, we'll attend the conference, we get so much out of it, but also we'll go out to dinner in between and we'll hang out in each other's hotel rooms because it's our meetup. So we had gone out to dinner and we took an Uber back to the hotel. And as we are getting out of the Uber and going into the hotel, there were people who had these clothing racks and they were pushing the clothing racks in the door. And on these clothing racks were things like feather boas and sequin, like Elton John sequin, bell bottom, matching gold outfits. It was so cool. So I asked the guy, I was like, what is this? What are you guys doing? And I thought he said a drag show. And I was like, can we come? Hello? How fun is that? And he looked at us up and down and he was like, what are you guys here for? We were like, we're prison wives. And he goes, you could look us up. It's drag da -da 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 com." So we're like, okay. And we go up to the hotel room. One of our girls was getting herself ready. She was performing that night. She's an incredible singer and a poet. So she's getting ready to perform with Die Jim Crow. We Googled the website they gave us and it was not a drag show. It was a swingers rave type of party. We're like, ah, uh, that's not as exciting as a drag show. But as we went downstairs, we were sitting at the bar waiting for this concert to take off and we see people walking back and forth getting themselves ready for this huge rave party. And they were hanging these huge swings from the ceiling. They had one room that I think was foam or bubbles or something like that. More and more people were coming. We go to our concert and we come back and we're sitting at the bar just hanging out. And all of these people start crawling out of the woodwork. All of the women were dressed kind of like Playboy bunnies, which was really sexy, but they were wearing these Playboy bunny bustiers and lingerie with these silk robes over them and all of the men were wearing robes, like short robes tied. And there was this one guy with this girl, she was beautiful, but he was probably 30 years older than her. And he was so obnoxious. The way that he was speaking to the girls and then more and more people kept coming and clearly he was from money and clearly he was a spoiled little rich kid or a new money spoiled guy. The staff is getting annoyed by these people because they were being really obnoxious at this point. They were starting to do sexual things out in public in the lobby of the hotel. They were getting loud, they were getting obnoxious, and this man was the ringleader. He was vaping inside and somebody had lit a cigarette inside a hotel in 2019. Are you serious? A female hotel employee comes and says something to him and he was so snarky and so condescending. He said something like, well, if you don't shut up and go away, I'll pull out my weed. Like that's worse, I'm gonna stick it to you. I'm not just gonna vape nicotine or a cigarette, I'm gonna pull out weed. He was just really condescending and she walked away, she got security. They came over and said something to him. He was snarky to them too. And he mentioned all of the money that he made and all of the money he was dropping that night and how they could take their party someplace else. He was one of those. Then more people started walking over and as they walk over, I see this girl who she doesn't look like she necessarily wants to be involved in this and she's wearing a bathrobe and this guy tells her, put your leg up there. There's these three or four steps going down from the lobby into the bar area. There's a railing around it and she straddles the railing and this other guy starts doing something to her under her robe. and. I looked at my girlfriends and I was like, I'm going to bed because if I don't get out of here, I'm going to say something to this man. And I knew how that would end if I said something to that man. People like that are so below the belt and they're so childish. They go after your physical beauty. And I knew that it just wasn't gonna end well for me or for him. And so I chose to walk away. And I texted my girlfriend who left that morning and I was like, thank God you're not here because the two of us would have not been able to keep our mouth shut if we were together we would have said something and it would have ended ugly. See, now I can look and see how I get lost in these tang tangents. Prison wives got a bad rap. We're the ones with the bad rap and you're the ones that are being obnoxious, spoiled little brats. And I could only imagine that the way that you speak to women and the way that you treat people and the way you talk about how you throw around so much money, you're probably doing stuff that can land you where my husband is. So please. Okay, let's do prison wife with 
singular. Prison wife life insurance? Prison wife life insurance? Am I gonna get stumped on this one? I know. I'm gonna hold the story time, but one of you guys reached out to me and asked me to do kind of like a true crime story on a case with this woman who's incarcerated, whose case is out of Texas, very gory case, and it could be around her potentially committing homicides, or so they're saying, for life insurance. She told me that she believes that the woman is innocent, so I reached out and I was like, all right, tell me what your proof is. And she was supposed to go back to the girl and get me some facts. So I do have a story time about it, but it's coming in the future. And let me know in the comments and give me a thumbs up if you like when I do true crime stuff. Cause I love to research those and do some of those for you too. Let's do prisoner. Prisoner tick tock challenges. You guys already know the story about that. I could tell you why I took down my TikTok video. This is a good story. A few weeks ago, I made a video about the right of prisoner TikTok challenges. I included some clips of some of the challenges that people had posted on their own personal TikToks. I got this message from this girl that I featured in the video without her permission. And she was very sweet in her message and she was very understanding. And she said, I'm not gonna lie. I understand why you did that. I understand why you're cautioning, but I ask if you could do me a favor and take down the video. I've learned my lesson. I'll pull down my videos. I know some of you guys are going to say, no, you should have let her learn her lesson, but think about it from this perspective. She's almost 23 years old. She's about to look for a job. I beg every single day for people to give Adam a second chance because of really bad mistakes that he made when he was her age. I'm not in the business of trying to punish somebody who is sorry for what they did, or I would be a hypocrite, but also I don't want to ruin this girl's life. I don't want to come in the way of her potentially getting a job that could be her career. I genuinely believe after speaking to her, going back and forth in a few emails, that she's a sweet girl and she learned her lesson. So my job is done. In fact, I hope she's here watching these videos now. I told her I'd be happy to support her if she proved that she was in this for the right reasons. And the fact that she pulled down those TikToks and the fact that she reached out to me, willing to have a back and forth adult conversation, that's all I wanted or needed. So a few of you did ask about the TikTok video, that's why it's down. If you don't agree with that, I get it. But at the same time, I'm fighting for Adam's second chance. He's punished every single day for the rest of his life for a mistake that he made at that girl's age. Wouldn't I be a hypocrite if I left that video up? A couple of the videos, not from that girl. When I searched the hashtag write a prisoner had been taken down. So I think that they're starting to take some of them down. It's still a big thing on TikTok, but I think that they've received your complaints and your emails and they started to look into it. So that's amazing. And the video did what I set out for it to do. That makes me happy. Okay, should we do one more? Let's do incarcerated. Incarcerated is a great place to work for you and your business. Incarcerated is a great place to work for you and your business. I mean, I guess the only thing that I can take out of that is Adam being incarcerated was a great opportunity for me to be able to start this YouTube channel and help people in my shoes that feel alone and need support every single day. So it helped me get in touch with my life's purpose. So yes, I guess incarcerated or incarceration is a great place to work for you and your business. That's like a fortune cookie or the gods in a cryptic way speaking directly to me. You're cool. That's a great one to end it on. I didn't feel as energetic in this video as usual. And again, I apologize because it's 752 degrees in my house. There's kids playing with four wheelers turning around in my driveway. Another day. Do it another day. I'm cranky as f because I'm hot. You gotta do it today. Hopefully I'll figure out a way to do these videos without melting. If not, I will be back as soon as possible when the air conditioning is fixed because beaded upper lip sweat is not a good look. <laughs> if you're interested in watching other videos, click one of the videos on the screen. And if you're not already subscribed, that's not nice. <laughs> Click the little circle there, or you could always do so by clicking the red box below. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.